Now in this session we will see module 2 that is losses evaporation and evapotranspiration in filtration. In losses evaporation the introduction pro uh, process factors affecting the evaporation and how to measure the evaporation we will see. For you in the syllabus there are only two kinds of measurement that is class A pan and an another one is estimation using empirical formula. Next is reservoir evaporation control. This will come in losses evaporation. And next is evapotranspiration. In this we will see introduction, consumptive use, AET, PET, factors affecting and measurement, estimation, the estimation process. And the third one is infiltration. Introduction, factors affecting the infiltration capacity and measurement of that. This is the syllabus of module 2. Now first we will see evaporation. We already saw about the precipitation. When the precipitation occurs, when the rain occurs, when the rain occurs or the, when the precipitation occurs on the ground, not all the water, not all the amount of water, like each and every amount of water will not be available as runoff. There will be some amount of losses. Those important losses are interception, evaporation, transpiration, infiltration, depression storage and watershed leakage. These are some of the important losses that will occur in precipitation. The total loss, the total loss is equal to precipitation minus surface runoff. We will get the total loss in precipitation when we subtract the surface runoff from the precipitation. First, we will see what is interception. Interception is defined as the amount of precipitation water which is intercepted by vegetative foliage, building and other objects lying on the land surface. When the precipitation comes, before hitting the ground, it will reach to the vegetative surface or some building surface. That loss of water is nothing but interception. The interception storage is the amount of precipitated water which wets the initially dried surface of the object. That is, if, if this C is the building and this is the ground. The interception is nothing but when the precipitation hits the building or the ground, the surface initially get wet. Then only the runoff will be there. That amount which takes to wet the surface is nothing but the loss of water due to interception. The factors affecting this interception is storm water, the plant factor, season and the wind. Depression storage. Depression storage is nothing but if this is an area, area will not be like straight. There will be some undulations. Maybe undulations may be deep or a small. The water stored in that depression areas is called as depression storage. It's called as depression storage. Factors affecting this depression storage is landform, the soil characteristics, topography or some man-made disturbance. It may be forming or terraces. Watershed leakage. Watershed leakage is nothing but when the water flow from one basin to other basin or from one basin to other sea, the water moving through some fissures, there may be any leakage in the way of passing, there may be any leakage. That is called as watershed leakage. About this evaporation, transpiration and infiltration, we will see in depth in this module. We already studied about hydrologic cycle. In hydrologic cycle, the evaporation and evapotranspiration is most important phases. The evaporation is nothing but 
it is a process of changing the liquid into gaseous state evaporation is a process of changing the liquid into gaseous state that we already know evaporation is a process in which liquid changes to gaseous state at the free surface even below the boiling point it is one of the continuous process it is like continuous natural process the main source of evaporation is natural radiation the main source of evaporation is nothing but solar radiation that is rays from the sun the losses due to the evaporation may be as high as 90% of the annual precipitation the loss here is as 90% of the annual precipitation we got to know what is evaporation now we will see what is the process of evaporation what is the process of evaporation consider a water body consider one water body which is having flat surface by supplying some external energy by supplying some external thermal energy to that water body the kinetic energy of the water molecules will increase the kinetic energy of the water molecules here will get increase and when the kinetic energy increases the molecules will tend to escape the molecules will tend to escape from the water body overcoming the intermolecular forces between them and eject them to the atmosphere this is the process of evaporation when you supply a uh, thermal energy to the water body having a flat surface the kinetic energy of the molecules of the water will get increased and they will tend to break their intermolecular bonding and escape the surface and they will move upward that is in the form of evaporation this is the process of evaporation the amount of energy expended by unit mass of the water while passing from liquid to vapor state at constant temperature is called as latent heat of evaporation that is l latent heat of evaporation that is the amount of energy expended by unit mass of water while changing from liquid to vapor state and when the external energy when the external energy is not made available that is when the external energy is not available the energy is removed from the water body while evaporation is taking place and then the water temperature will decrease that is the day duration like day time the thermal energy will be there and in the night time the water temperature will cool down out of total atmospheric pressure on the free surface there will be some contribution by vapor molecules present in them this partial pressure exerted by the vapor is called as vapor pressure we have a one more concept in evaporation called vapor pressure a concept called vapor pressure that is nothing but in a total atmospheric pressure in a total atmospheric pressure on this free surface in total atmospheric pressure on this free surface there will be some contribution of vapor molecules with the atmospheric pressure the pressure of the vapor molecules will also be contributed that pressure is called as vapor pressure there comes a point where there comes a point where because of the continuous heat supply because of continuous heat supply the more and more accumulation of vapor molecules because of more and more accumulation of vapor molecules the gaseous medium can no longer accommodate any more molecules there comes a point because of the increase in heat pressure this air molecules cannot accommodate more water molecules so 
that will reject that will reject the vapor molecules in the form of condensation in the form of condensation this one we already studied in the condensation the vapor will come back to the earth in the form of precipitation at this point at the time of condensation at this point the pressure the vapor pressure is called as saturation vapor pressure at this point at the point of condensation the vapor pressure is called as saturation vapor pressure there is a concept called equilibrium state that is the vapor pressure of the air the vapor pressure of the air above the free surface is equal to saturation vapor pressure the vapor pressure is equal to the vapor pressure the vapor pressure is equal to saturation vapor pressure the vapor pressure of air is equal to saturation of saturation vapor pressure then when this condition satisfies there will not be evaporation or condensation this is called as equilibrium state dalton's law of evaporation from dalton's law of evaporation the rate of evaporation e can be related to vapor pressure this rate of evaporation e we can relate to the vapor pressure in this dalton's law of evaporation the formula is e is equal to c into es minus ea e is evaporation loss that is in mm per day in mm per day and c is a constant c is a constant value that depends on various factors such as wind velocity humidity and pressure c is a constant and es es is saturation vapor pressure at water surface saturation water pressure at water surface saturation vapor pressure then ea ea is nothing but actual vapor pressure this is saturation vapor pressure and this is actual vapor pressure for the evaporation to continue ea should be less than es for the evaporation to continue the actual pressure should be less than the saturation pressure for the evaporation to be high for the evaporation to be high then es minus ea should be more for the evaporation to be high the difference between the saturation vapor pressure and actual vapor pressure should be more the difference if the difference here is more then the evaporation rate will be more this is the process of evaporation next we will see factors affecting the evaporation losses there are eight factors which are affecting evaporation that is nature of evaporating surface area of water surface depth of water in the water body humidity wind velocity temperature of air atmospheric pressure and quality of water now we will see one by one nature of evaporating surface the nature of evaporating surface is nothing but nature of the surface from which the water is evaporating the different evaporating surface like soil water area forest area lakes depending on the area the potentiality of evaporating potentiality of evaporating will vary if you compare between black cotton soil and red soil if you compare between black cotton soil and red soil black cotton soil has more capacity in absorbing the incoming radiation so the evaporation will be more in black cotton soil compared to the red soil the evaporation from wet soil is faster and it reduces gradually as the soil become drier because when the amount of water is more in the soil the evaporation rate will be more 
as the soil get dried the evaporation rate will be less the second one is area of water surface the evaporation loss directly depends on the area of water surface greater the area greater the area the loss will be more greater the area the loss will be in turn more it depends on the area also next is depth of water in the water body depth of water in the water body deep water bodies evaporate slower than the shallow water bodies the deep water body when the thickness of the water layer that is depth of the water layer is more then the temperature the temperature of the water the heating process will also get lower so that time the evaporation will reduce if the water is shallow the depth is less then because the amount of water will get heated so easily the evaporation rate will be more that is depth of water in the water body and the fourth one is humidity evaporation is inversely proportional to the humidity if the humidity in the atmosphere is more the evaporation will be less the humidity concept is inversely proportional to evaporation it is inversely proportional to evaporation if humidity is more the evaporation will be less if humidity is less then evaporation will be more next fifth one is wind velocity wind moves on overlying vapor from the from an evaporating body thereby increasing the rate of evaporation see this is the water body the water vapor initially it will start to go up at that time when the wind blows the wind will take this water vapor with it the wind will take it this water vapor with it so again again the surface will get heated again the vapor will slightly come up the wind will blow if the wind velocity is more then the evaporation is also more however this wind velocity however this wind velocity may not remove the water vapor from small water bodies it may not remove but the wind velocity it is in turn it will affect the water bodies having larger capacity of water the sixth factor is temperature of air increase in the temperature of air increases the evaporation rate though it is not always same increase in the temperature will increase in evaporation rate next seventh one is atmospheric pressure as per dalton's law as per dalton's law evaporation will be less if the atmospheric pressure is more the evaporation will be less if atmospheric pressure is more see evaporation will be less if atmospheric pressure is more thus at higher altitudes evaporation loss is more while it deep valleys evaporation rate is less that is in higher areas see this is higher area and this is lower level area in this areas the evaporation rate is more whereas compared to this compared to the higher elevation in lower elevation radius evaporation will be less compared to that next last concept is quality of air the presence of dissolved salts in water reduces the saturation vapor pressure of the water presence of impurities present of impurities or salts in water this will reduce the presence of impurities or salts in the water this will reduce the evaporation loss this will reduce the evaporation loss because the presence of this salt will reduce the saturation vapor pressure es the saturation vapor pressure will be reduced in turn the evaporation will also be 
reduced. These are the eight factors that affect the evaporation. 